Silex Press presents The book launch of A.T. Castagli's Prouder Than Ever My War My Diary My Embroidery Compiled by Alexis Penny Castagli, daughter St. Sophia's Cathedral, London, 23rd October 2014. The Crypt. I've never been to a book launch in a crypt before. shaking hands with is uh, guys really being through it. So yeah, reading his story is going to be really interesting, I think. I've looked forward to it uh, for a while now. I'm interested in the book. I think it's a very interesting uh, a read. I'm sure it's going to be, you know, it's my kind of read anyway. So uh, I, I think it's going to be really good. I just find um, this embroidery just so beautiful. And, you know, the circumstances that it was done in were quite amazing. You know, it's one thing to write about your everyday occurrences, but he's writing about survival, and I think that in itself will be interesting. So I look forward to uh, to delving into those pages. I look forward to the ending. Yeah. Only because we never know how it will end. That's right. Well, he's going to do something for you, which we hope will give you a feeling of that extraordinary time in Greece and give you a feeling of the writer of the diary. Published here for the first time, Prouder Than Ever is the amazing secret diary Major A.T. Castagli, an anglicised Greek, wrote in spite of great danger while he was a prisoner in Nazi Germany during the Second World War. It starts on the Greek island of Crete. Prouder than ever. 1st of June, 1941. At 9 a.m., I set out with another man, I forget his name, to force Ace Q. There were many planes overhead coming down low to machine gun any moving object. We had to be careful. I had not gone far by 9.30 a.m. when I heard a new noise, a bang, and a whistling, then an explosion behind us. There was only one solution. The Germans had arrived at the cave where Force HQ had been, and were now firing mortars from there, which were bursting somewhere near where our own cave was. Any attempt to go further would have been useless. We retraced our steps, now having the added hazard of the mortars, but the whistling gave one due warning. I arrived at the cave and broke the news to the others. 
We decided, decided to wait a while and see what happened. Meanwhile, we posted a lookout to keep watch on the hill on which Force HQ had their cave. Shortly, the lookout reported that he could see two parties of our troops carrying white flags going towards Svakia. I sent a man to the nearest party, asking them what was happening. The answer came back that we had capitulated to the Germans at 5.30 a.m., and all resistance had ceased. We were to march to Svakia under a white flag. So, this was the end. I had thought it possible that we might escape to Egypt. I had thought it highly likely in Stilos that we would be killed. And at other times one hardly expected to get away without being at least wounded. But never did the thought cross my mind that I should be taken prisoner. June, 1941. We were put ten officers to a plane and flown to Athens. The JU-52 I was in was made in 1934, according to the plate fixed inside. Athens, 8.30 a.m. Transported by lorry from Tatoi to Athens, and what a sad journey that was. Passing through the well-known streets and seeing all the old haunts. But as a prisoner, and day until 1.30 p.m. We just marched on automatically, halting about 10 minutes every two hours. The Germans promised to shoot 10 officers for every one who tried to escape, but we were all far too tired, weak and hungry to do much more than put one foot before the other. This forced march over the Bray Lost Pass really tested me. We had no food, only what we found along the way. The weakest fell out and were collected by the Germans and brought along in lorries. I did all right. I was shod in shoes, but they stood up really well. I managed to carry my pack with my very few remaining worldly possessions in it and my water bottle. 
The march was 22 miles, and in fact, for the last three, I carried half of Leslie Aiken's kit too. He was in a very bad way, but we made it all right. None of us will ever forget the kindness and sympathy of the Greek people we pass in the villages. Our miserable, bedraggled column was the object of their great generosity, although they must feel that we must have let them down. Though they never, by word or deed, was it even hinted at. From them, we got our only water, and whatever food they had to spare, they gave us. Had it not been for them, I do not like to think what state we should be in. One day, I shall go over this road again, and try and repay some of that kindness. It makes me prouder than ever to be Greek. A.T. Castagli is prouder than ever. Available exclusively through silexpress.co.uk. 20% of the sale price goes to the British Red Cross.
hashtag prouder than ever.